Hi, good day, hello, and how are you? So we're looking at a more in-depth idea about forces, motion, and so forth. So in this series, we're going to look at momentum, forces, and how to draw forces diagram. Let's jump right in. For forces and motion, we're going to look at what is the difference between mass and weight as one of the objective questions. Second objective question, describe how the resultant force can change the motion of a body. Objective question three, calculate the resultant of two or more forces acting along the same line. And objective question number four is, what is the effect of friction, air resistance, or drag on a moving object? All right, so here we're back on the slides. And our fifth question is, which things are important to remember about forces? So what is important to remember when you're working with forces? Number one, so the things that are important when working with forces, number one, we draw them with arrows, and the arrow direction is showing the force of the, the direction of the force. So in which direction is the force being applied? The length or the size of the arrow will show you how strong the force is that's being applied. And we also need to take into consideration which forces can change the direction of our object. So if you're in a car, we can use the brakes to change the direction or we can crash into something to change the direction. We therefore need to make very sure what we draw in our forces diagrams. Remember, force can always change the direction of an object or it can accelerate it to make it move even faster than it was moving before. Second to last question, how do we identify a resultant force? So a resultant force is when you actually calculate and you find which direction the object is moving based on a calculation to find the difference between your two forces that are being applied. So if you have force to the left, force to the right, like we had before, one is bigger, the other one is smaller. And we, if we remember the example I had, we had 20 newtons going to the left and five newtons going to the right. Therefore, it was 15 newtons going to the left. Last question, what occurs when there is no resultant force? So if there is nothing working against the direction of motion, what will happen? It's exactly like what you're doing right now. You're sitting stationary, unless you're walking around. But for the most part, when there is no push or pull applied to an object, the object being you in this case, you cannot and will not move. You will stay stationary in one position. It will not change. Now that we know all these things about forces, we need to learn how to draw forces diagrams. And a simple way would be to draw a little picture of what is happening. So I'm going to draw three or four pictures to show you what a forces diagram should look like in your test or exam. If you're sitting on your chair, like I am at the moment, it means that you have a normal force going upwards from your center. So a normal force going upwards, and we call it F normal. There we go. And we have a force going downwards, which is the force of weight. In this case, you can see that these forces are at balance. Why are they considered to be at balance? Well, they're considered to be at balance because the one is equal and opposite to the other. Balanced forces. Force normal is equal and opposite to force of weight. So this is a balanced situation. Let's look at a non-balanced situation. In this case, you're sitting on the same chair, but this time your chair has wheels. And we all know what's fun about wheelie chairs, we can roll around on them. We're still sitting on the chair, but the chair has changed. And we have a friend, someone, and she's pushing our chair. That means our chair will have a force applied. So she's applying the force here. And then we have a friction force, which is going in this direction. The friction force comes from the wheels at the bottom here. At the bottom of the wheels, we have a friction force because there is a contact force. And then we still have two forces left. We have one downwards, which is our weight, G. H, T, and the force which goes upward, which is our force normal. 
or contact. So this is our forces diagram, just if a friend pushes us on a wheelie chair. And then let us look at another one of us in water. If you're floating in water or swimming, you will have a force downwards of your weight. But in this case, you will have up thrust. You will have drag, which is going opposite to your direction. Force of drag. And this is the direction of your force applied. Because this is the direction in which you are swimming. So you're kicking and swimming in that direction to the right. So that was that for this part of our motion and forces section. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you have time to go and look at the different links that I shared with you during this video. Enjoy your day.